Okay, right, so we're back um, with this GV70. Our oil pump came in, so we're gonna replace this. There's some coolant hose that's um, on the way, so we're just gonna remove the coolant pump here aside so that we can access some bolts there. There's only three bolts in the coolant um, oil pump. And we don't have to remove the high voltage on this guy because we're just dealing with the small wires. So just 12 volts, that should be fine. So I'm gonna remove the two bolts holding this pump. There's an access point at the subframe for the 10 mm, and there's one here on top, the 10 mm too. So I'm gonna, the bottom part, I'm gonna use a quarter because the 3 8 won't fit. I know you guys can see anything. <laughs> You're on top of the subframe right now. Okay, slowly. Okay. So that bolt is out. Let's try removing this. Okay. So now, I guess we can put this aside. I'm just gonna remove the water pump connector here. If I can. I'm going to remove these clips here. Okay. So maybe like that, that should be fine. And then on this side here, I'm going to remove the top bolt first. And there's two bolts on the pump. So I'm not sure if there's going to be fluid coming out on this one. So I prepare our bucket here, a clean bucket, because I don't know what fluid is using too. So let me try the swivel. I got the swivel socket here. I try if this guy will fit in there. Okay. So that fits there. I'm just gonna remove it by hand. Okay, so one bolt is out. Now we're gonna do the bottom part here. So I'm just using a 3 8 again, a short extension and a long 12 mm socket. Just loosen them. So be careful when removing this guy. Because there's a gasket on that. So let me prepare that um, new oil pump first. So here's our, I don't know, you guys can see that the light is too bright. Um, yeah, this guy, that's our oil pump, our gasket. So, I'm gonna remove the bottom part of the bolt. Oh. 
while holding the pump because I don't know if there's going to be fluid coming out here. Um, I think there should be fluid coming out in this, guys. But I'm not sure yet what type of fluid. Okay, it looks like a red, red. It looks like a transmission fluid. So let's see. I'm going to remove it. So I'm just, um, I'm collecting it in a clean bucket or a basin, right? And especially like this, this car's too new. You don't know if you have available fluid. So make sure, let's collect it. So I'm gonna remove it slowly. Fluid is coming out. Just maybe we need to reuse this fluid. Okay, so there it is. Let me remove this. There's just a little bit of fluid came out. Okay. I'm gonna inspect where's our gasket. Make sure it's there. Okay, it's still there. And then we're gonna put it in. So I just called a new gasket in there, just in case that it will come off. But usually, these guys, this too new, and I don't think that's damage, right? Usually the, the gasket will just get damaged when you're trying to remove the component, and it came off with the component and it scratches on the surface where it mounts, right? Uh, that's that's just me <laughs> so and so far that gasket is there and sometimes too when you remove it because i know those sonata hybrid with the old pump they have the gasket too sometimes when you remove that guy the gasket um, it's gonna be misplaced or it's gone while removing it so there's also you know um just to make sure that you have the gasket so just order that but if it came off from the from the the call that where it mounts right um just replace it but if it's still there just leave it that should be fine I know we there's some fluid came off when we removed the pump and I, I don't think that's that's a lot that we need to tap this off so I'm just gonna leave it like that so I don't think that's that's gonna be like critical for me so I'm gonna leave it like that and we're gonna torque this mounting bolts here for our pump this is 12 mm i think this is 18 foot pound i'm gonna double check first okay so the torque for those 12 mm is 19 foot pound 19 foot pound I'm still not in And also, I read on the manual. So I read on the shop manual. <laughs> it says there, while removing the new oil pump or the old oil pump, as much as possible, put all the fluid that came out the same amount right that's what it says there so let's just see here we're gonna try that there's just a little bit though but anyway okay let's start i'm gonna do the other one the top one now
Okay, and the bottom part. Okay, now we're going to put our water pump back on, this electric water pump. Make sure it's there. And then let's put our bottom part bolt out of this one that's going in nicely. Okay. bottom bolt <laughs> for the water pump or the bracket is not lining up to the hole that's not good So I'm going to remove the top bolt first and the water pump. And install this bottom bolt first. I think that's going to be easier. I hope so. too far away though. What's going on in this one? What's going on? Oh, there's a group there on the motor mount itself i think you need to put that in nicely there same thing as an hour okay same thing as an hour top one so the way the mount is installed there there's a rubber protector for the water pump i think so you have to line that up nicely okay so our bottom part is in now we're just gonna install this guy so that's why i was having a hard time earlier installing that bolt because the what they call that the rubber 
it's not the groove there is not going in nicely okay put this clip here make sure what's going on why is that okay the connector for the oil pump because later what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna install back or put our scope in and see what we have do we have the same pattern when it when that pump fails at least we can learn something from there um let me clean it with brake cleaner first Okay, so here's our fluid that came out. Um, you see that it's just a little bit. So I think I won't bother putting that in. Um, here's our drain hole for this motor and our plug there on top. If you can see that. So that's where you fill up the fluid. It's like a manual transmission. I think whatever, whenever it's gonna overflow from there, that's the time you stop. But this is our drain hole there. So I'm going to set up my scope and then we're going to go for a drive and see um, if we fix this problem. Okay guys, so we're inside the car now. I'm just going to... So I hook up our scope here. Um, you guys can see that the green is our communication. The blue is our power feed. Same thing as our yellow, right? And the red, the red is the ground so let me hook up our scan tool first because i forgot what what was the code that we had is it high current i'm not sure so can we notice i don't know if my last testing was the same orientation here but um we didn't try to capture with the amp clamp to check the current itself, right? But well, let's check first what code we have here. Okay, uh, full code. Okay, it's in the front motor that we had a code. So I'm just gonna scan that and see. <laughs> Let's go history. So electric current so yeah motor electric oil pump current this one don't worry about this maybe this is during the update but this is the motor electric oil pump current high okay so i'm gonna erase those codes let's see if we can erase that and then let's go to our data again Okay, so home, data, front motor. Oh no, I do multi-data, sorry. Let's go back first. Because at least we can compare the front and rear. Okay, let's go home, multi-data, front and rear. Front motor, we need the old pump. 
Let's see if we can very block them. This is electric water pump, electric oil pump. Okay, actual speed, command speed, and DC current. I think that's the three that we tried to to look. Okay. The same thing on the rear. On the rear, we need the uh, actual speed, command speed, and the current. It's okay. Graph all of it. Okay. Okay. So now let's start this by uh, watching our scope here. Okay. Let me just stop that. Let's see what we have in there. We're not trying to drop. In there. Right. So let's just make sure that the same thing as last time. We got some noise. Um, every time we try to move that. Well, at least our ground is good ground. Right. Red is the ground. We got 21 millivolts there. And our blue, the power supply, and the yellow power supply is on 12 volts. And then we have good communication here. Okay, let me cross and then put more time there. And let's play this. Okay, so I'm gonna go reverse now. I'm also checking our data there. So you can see our current went up for the front right same thing in our rear here so i guess we i don't know if we need to go out so we can see the data here on our scope same thing there's still some noise there every time this oil pump is starts working right and if it's not working it's gonna go clean as you can see that so let's go around Because last time we just duplicate this issue in the building. I don't know if we can do that the same thing here. Okay, so far we still have reading on our scan tool. So I was just back probing all my connection underneath. Uh, whoops. So for my, what's wrong with my data there where it freezes up? Right. Start. Did it just freeze up? Okay, I'm gonna stop first and see if this one will go to zero. Okay, it went zero.
drive again. So all my current there, front and back, they're all the same. It's reading two amps. Jump earlier at three amps. I don't know if that can cause the issue because our rear is just staying at two amps. So I'm gonna stop again, make it to zero. Okay, zero. Now I'm gonna go move two amps. It went to three. So I don't know if that one up difference is normal or not. Because <laughs> I didn't see that last time, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna drive this more. At least our connection from our scope is good. The same thing as last time that we did our testing. We just did this to make sure that it's, we have the same um, capture, right? Or if there's any indication on our previous signals that can indicate that we have a bad oil pump. But as I said last time, um, I just want to make sure that all our powers, ground and communication that's going into that oil pump is all present when the problem happens so that we know that it's not um, the circuit itself that's giving the issue or giving that code. So yeah, I'm gonna go back to the shop and then I'm gonna test drive this outside, make sure that that, that warning light doesn't come back on and we don't have any codes and this front motor data here will not drop up to zero because last time it goes to zero when that problem occurs so yeah so so far that signal that we have right now here that's normal it is gonna be a little bit noisy right when that pump is working when uh, when the pump is not working it's all clean and nice so yeah um we'll see later all right guys so i just came up from the highway um so far I don't have warning lights on our cluster, that EV warning light. Um, and as you can see here, because these, these vehicles are rear wheel drive base, on this side here, as you can see there, it's all flat line zero. Because when, when it's up to speed already, it's just going to use the rear motors, right? And right now, at 50 kilometers per hour, um, the front oil pump is not working at all because I guess it's the rear motors that's driving this car. But every time you're at slow speeds or um, turning or something like that, getting more traction. So that's the time the front motor will kicks in. As you can see that. So um, we did our test earlier after that um, replacement around the building. So that's a good test because we're concerned about the front motor, right? So we just need those turning and um, low speed driving because that's when that front oil pump will work. So, so far, I'm happy with the result. We don't have any lights there. Um, no dropouts on our oil pump, right, on the front. So, yeah, um, I don't know if you guys see clearly on the replacement part of the video because you guys are just on top of the subframe i place you there but there's no you know uh, good space where to put the camera so anyway if you have any suggestions let me know um write them in the comment box and once again thank you for dropping by and see you next time